Hey guys, we're back here again in our Iron Maiden album review series going on here. And kind of crazy how it panned out, but you know, today dropped Iron Maiden's first single in five years. You know, their last album, Book of Souls, came out in 2016. But they finally dropped a new single. I thought, man, I'm so hyped for it. Uh, the new album, I'm hyped to see the new album cover. What's Eddie going to look like once they, you know, announce all that and stuff. But the single was incredible. Highly suggest to check it out. I had a really cool music video, too. But um, I doubt the album will be out by the time I get to the ranking uh, video for all their albums. But if not, it's, you know, I'll just review the album when it does come out and kind of tell you where I'd place it. But anyways, with all that being said, we're looking at a masterpiece today. We're looking at 1984's Power Slave. This was my first Iron Maiden album I ever owned or heard. Of course, I'd heard like the hits and stuff like Run to the Hills and, you know, stuff like that. Like, but as far as albums go, this was the one that, you know, this is the one that did it for me. And then I had to get a copy like immediately. And uh, yeah, I've got a sealed copy here. Of course, it's original pressing. You know that if uh, you've watched my channel before, I only deal with original pressings. But um, man, this album is just freaking incredible front to back has just gnarly production it's got some of the best bass tones i've ever heard from steve harris i've said that the past couple but it's true and he just keeps topping himself um it has my favorite guitar tone um from dave and uh, adrian out of any maiden album period and some of their best solos are on this thing and then of course i mean and this this is arguably their heaviest album like it's fast and what I mean fast, you jump off with the opening track, Ace is High. Man, first time I ever heard that, I was just like, okay, this is going to be some heavy business right here. And I was like, man, and, and it didn't disappoint. Ace is High, it's one of, the, one of the hits off here. But, you know, this one I don't think was ever really overplayed or anything. And it's just still one of my favorite Maiden Opers and Maiden tracks. It's just that damn good. Um, then you get Two Minutes to Midnight, another hit off here. Got, kind of got some dark lyrics, that are really fast one, has a very cool breakdown. Kind of a lengthier than the regular single, um, about the same length as like Where Eagles Dare off Peace of Mind. But man, just another one of my favorite Maiden tracks, yet again. Those two in a row, and it's just, wow. Then we, oh, and Bruce's vocals on these, and I love the background vocals kind of kicking in on during the chorus for Two Minutes to Midnight. Then you have their last uh, instrumental track, which is probably... I'd probably go ahead and say that's uh, my favorite instrumental track by Maiden, period. I mean, a close runner-up is Genghis Khan um, off Killers, but uh, Lost for Words, Big Aura is a hell of an instrumental. It's just, you talk about, um, you know, that guitar tone, you get to hear full effects during this track right here. And man, I just, what a freaking, you know, final instrumental. Who knows, maybe they'll end up doing a, another instrumental on their... Uh, new album coming out, which I would not be opposed to that at all. That'd be pretty freaking sweet. Then you've got, well, oh man, one of the most underrated Maiden tracks ever, Flash of the Blade. That is one of the coolest and heaviest riffs. And like, oh my God, those hammer-ons Dave and Adrian are pulling on right off the bat there. My God. And the chorus, you have, again, some powerful, really cool lyrics. And, you know... With this track and the next one, they're both kind of like sword fighting and stuff. Dave and Adrian, they, they just do it perfectly on this album. The dueling guitars, it sounds like a sword fight going on. Like, they just, they really nailed that. So, um, but yeah, the next track, The Duelist, like I said, they, uh, they, do, they do that dueling guitar stuff right there. And another just really heavy, fast-paced track. The production, I mean, I'm telling you, this thing is just, oh, it's not like the, the cleanest production ever, but like it didn't need to be. Like it's just heavy, you know. It's not muddy or anything or, or raw even, but it's just heavy, heavy, heavy stuff. And Flash of the Blade, man, that may be my favorite track off that side one. That one or maybe one of the first two. The Duelist is incredible. All those tracks are just essential made in listening. Then you hop on side two, which has less tracks, only three tracks, because you got some epics. But before the epics kick in, you got the heavy and just brutal back to back in the village which i love the 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 chorus is very melodic i love the uh the breakdown like very tacked on at the very end of the song right before the last chorus i thought that was pretty cool time change they did 
Um, and of course, the ending, you know, where, where Bruce is just back in the village, in the back of the just, you know, tearing it up. I love that. Then you have maybe my ma favorite Maiden song of all time. If not, then one of them. My God, the title track, Power Slave. You talk about the Egyptian themes and stuff on this album. That That's it right there. That track just sums it up for you. And the lyrics are just incredible. You know, tell me why I had to be a power slave. I don't want to die. I'm a god. Why can't I live on? You know, a, a king's or a pharaoh's struggle with, you know, accepting that he's not the almighty power. You know, and oh, that riff is just, it's so Egyptian sounding. And the tempo, I love that too, how the tempo just kind of increases each verse, if you like. But not, not too much. But, you know, if you really listen, that tempo is just kind of speeding up. It's like, man... And the freaking solos from Dave and Adrian on here, it's my favorite Maiden solo. It's got to be. Oh, man, because whenever it breaks down and gets back to the, kind of that clean tone, and then they just, boom, kick it in for that solo. One of the best songs of all time, and it's a good, like, eight minutes, awesome Iron Maiden epic. That was the track that, you know, this be my first Iron Maiden album, and I'd only heard, you know, the, uh, the hits before this one uh, a long time ago. Well, after I heard that track, I remember being like, okay, this band is on another level, <laughs> you know? But, you know, and and they top it off with an epic even longer that's probably, what, 12 or 13 minutes? Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. My God, how many times? That, that is proggy as hell, man. It's got crazy time change. That super cool br bass breakdown from uh, Steve Harris. Then you got, like, the cool part where it sounds like the... The boat is just rocking and stuff. It tells a whole story in that song, which is really cool. And um, another just really heavy one and a really, really fast Maiden track. And one that, you know, obviously didn't get a lot of radio play because it's it's freaking long. But you got to hear the whole thing, you know, all to really get the, to capture the majestic feel it gives. And just, man, the story it tells. Such an incredible song. One of my favorites off here, period. But, oh, man. Yeah, you've got just loaded, loaded with incredible tracks off here, as you can see. And it's been that way for pretty much all these reviews thus far. And spoiler alert, it's probably going to be that way for the next album we review. Of course, Somewhere in Time, um, which kind of was a little controversial. Not, not majorly, but a little controversial back when it came out due to the synthesizers and stuff being featured on the, on, you know, on the album. But I'll get into my thoughts and stuff about that uh, next time. But yeah, guys, uh, check out that new Maiden single. It's so freaking good. And if you haven't heard anything off this album or this album in its entirety, you got to do it if you're a Maiden fan or if you want to get into Maiden. This is like the the essential, like one of the essential Maiden albums that will give you a good, uh, really, you could really say that for like any of theirs, to be honest, or, or the majority of theirs, like especially in these 80s ones. Um, but yeah, this is just, Again, another incredible album on their grand streak of greatness they keep doing. But yeah, like, subscribe, let me know what you think about it in the comments, and thanks, guys.